this came out, you know, layers and layers of fear. And, you know, sometimes fear comes in different form. But as I was in the season and the fear just um, came, um, just surfaced the whole time, it was literally in the spirit as if a giant of fear was standing in front of me and telling me, you know what, I'm going to kill you. Jesus. And I had a choice in that time whether I was going to bow down before the spirit of fear and take it to in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Or if I'm going to stand in faith and believe what we the Lord says. We bind you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so this is a lot like the story of Elijah. Because of fear, bitterness. Jezebel threatened Elijah and, and said to him, I'm going to kill you. And he took that fear Amen. and he ran. He ran into Heavenly the wilderness Father, and he went to lie under a tree. And he was depressed he and dismayed so and discouraged. And he wanted to die in that place. And so, you know what the Lord told him is he said to him, Elijah, arise. Elijah, believe, arise, you know, all, all God, God uh, Elijah, arise, Especially all of you sons and hour, daughters of God, arise in the name of Jesus. Um, we can all of you soldiers, warriors of Adonai, arise in the Africa. name of Jesus. Easily, we can go into Pick the yourself the up again. You and must get up. Each and every one of us are you must get up. To say, Lord, you I must get up. Before the spirit of fear. Depression. I want to arise. rebuke you in the name of Jesus. So you must song, not bow down to fear, child of God. Repent today, life. repent, you know so God can help you it. faster. Because Heavenly Father, we repent of any of all of our sins in the name of Jesus. We repent, Yeshua Jesus, of all of our sins in the name of Jesus. To put our focus on the physical, to put our focus on ourselves. We are righteous children of God. The Lord is saying, I want your focus to be on me. I want the focus so of your Christ. children to be only as she's saying on you and you. Listen to the song, Bride of Christ. Listen to the song, The Righteous Child of God. This is by Sarah Van Vuren and Lizzie Hadassah Vid, Feast of Trumpets. The song is called Arise. Under, free, under fair use. Praise be to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, hallelujah to Jesus of Nazareth, hallelujah to our Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Jesus Christ, Messiah. Praise be to Jesus, glory be to you. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters, rise up with me, rise up with me, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, with the wisdom against any you know, evil and wickedness. Listen to the words. This will surely your life or this is your life it will be no more I went into the wilderness my steps were steps of fear as I ran away from the threat my enemies attempt to trade
Father, I pray that you will come and break the stronghold of fear. In the name of Jesus, our Messiah. Fear of the future, fear of man. Fear of not being good enough. I pray that you will break that. I pray, Father, that you will give us the boldness to face our giants and to stand up against every giant of fear. It is you in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Give us the confidence. Thank you, Father, that we are more than overcomers, more than conquerors. In you who loves us. Amen. Your delight in the darkness, beloved brothers and sisters. You delight in the darkness and you must break. You must break the stronghold of fear, my beloved brothers and sisters. You must, brothers and sisters, understand that some of us for posting the videos that I post for you on Oil is the Name of Yeshua, we are being heavily, heavily assaulted, tortured, scourged, beaten, pierced, even raped, or at least there were attempts. This isn't just me. This isn't to scare you. This is to show you, my beloved brothers and sisters, that you, whoever you are, you are not the only one. You're not crazy, yes. They've been targeting you, but it's not like they make it sound like it's the whole government is against you. It's simply one or two people and their warlocks and they'll pull whatever whatever hookups, connections are necessary to make you believe that its entire government is against you, including the three letter agencies. They will they will all, in the name of Jesus, attempt to do this. This isn't the first, this isn't the last time. Holy Spirit dwells inside of you, brothers and sisters. And what this means, in the name of Jesus, that these people who have I was gonna play to you, my brothers and sisters, a very simple, um, a very cool, um, a very cool video actually by Sister Lisa. And in this video, my Sister Lisa, it was titled from two months ago, Sister Lisa of Sabbath Seekers, we're all post-tribulation now, post-trib now. Of course, this is, um, God has woke me up this morning, my brothers and sisters. And, uh, you know, he said, he said, you're going to be basically in, um, you know, you're going to wake up this morning. He called out right off the bat, very specific enemies. He mentioned, it was, he said, this is going to be the day of assaults and mischief against you. I'm going to, he's like, I'm with you. Don't worry. Um, I'm here for you. But I want to and I want you to understand, you. brothers and sisters, how this works, you even right now as I'm recording with you. you. Kingdom of Water Kingdom is harassing me still right now. They've been Let's rebuked as I've been everyone. praying now for a little bit more than it 10 hours since 8.30 this morning. So let's say 10 hours. It's now almost 7. It's almost, today. yeah, it's 7 o'clock. So 7 plus 4. Please. Yeah, it's, 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 Take um... So let's say that half hour, so it's 10 and a half hours, almost 11 hours. It's crazy. That's, you see what I'm saying? This is why I'm recording this video. So you will understand and know that you can be in the eye of the storm. You can be in the middle of the storm. And you must 
maintain your position. You must learn to maintain your position in bride of Christ. You must maintain your position, children of God. You must maintain your position with... You don't have to be happy and cheerful. If you can, if you can make a turn bitterness, when bitterness comes upon you, they're going to ram you with witchcraft, one of their latest, uh, the latest, their most recent. If it's not the devil, that it's going to, one of the attacks is, number one is, they're going to come against the name of Jesus and they're going to make you doubt, do anything and say anything to make you doubt the name of Jesus. That the name of Jesus, you don't know it. You have to use just the name, the Hebrew name, or just this name, or just that name. Or you don't know it in Hebrew, or you didn't ask, you know, they... Don't you know that when you say Jesus is from, you know, one of the Jezebel doctrines that it, the name of Jesus is from Zeus, not so. Who was there before, the potter or the clay? Who was first? The potter. Okay. Jesus is the God of the surge. Jesus is the Aleph and Taf, Alpha and Omega. So let's not even go there. Let's not even discuss this. Sister Lisa of Sabbath Seekers says awesome videos, awesome teachings, very prophetic teachings. If you guys ever want a good channel, interesting channel for some of the dreams, look up her videos from even three years ago. Three years ago, she's very good at explaining this. Usually, I'm pretty much always under attacks, not because I'm in sin, but because. I walk in perfect obedience and loyalty to our Heavenly Father, His Son, Jesus. And I'm Holy Spirit-filled, Holy Spirit-led. And basically, um, the things that God shows me are very, 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 very high-level things. And with time, I will be releasing them on as Father God requests. But I'm here to tell you what some of those Jezebel doctrines are. Another uh, way of attack will be against you, my brothers and sisters, is to now, with the very high ranks, the devil simply is hoping to wear you out by continued, continued attack. And the point is for you not to waver in faith. Oh, Jesus doesn't love me. Oh, God just doesn't want me. It's just simply stay where you are. In order to also scare you, they might be oppressing oh, like your breathing, like your neck, maybe even your face. Your eyes, your forehead, they'll be squeezing your hand. They might be heating you up, just your head or just your chest or both. And then if that's not going to work, they're going to start pounding your head. A little bit at the top, a little bit in the back, up front, sides. They might start at all maybe a knee, a hip, a spine. They're, start, they're, they're squeezed. And if squeezes don't work, that's worse. That's basically slow suffocation. That, that describes evil spirit of like a constricting spirit, like a boa, like a snake. And... And they're gonna they're gonna try to squeeze your finances. They're gonna try to squeeze your happiness. They're gonna try to squeeze your love. They're gonna try to squeeze your whatever you as a human being you are, personality wise, character wise. That God has already no. That's what you are. It cannot be changed because that's what you are. If God has um, rewarded you, my brother, my sister, with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, whether it's one gift or two or three. Whatever it may be, remember, you are God's beloved. God is not against you. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is this God. And the word of God, Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is not against you. He's for you. So remember, don't let the enemy mess with your head. Beloved bride of Christ, don't let the devil mess with your head. Know the difference. Are you loyal? You know you're fiercely loyal. Loyalty, wisdom tells us, is better than sacrifice. If you are loyal... And if you're loving and kind, just as loyalty is better than sacrifice, love covers variety of sin at all times. So even, and again, and we are in the covenant of the precious blood of Jesus, covenant of faith, the so-called in the Romans chapter 4, law of faith, we are all under. It's called, this covenant is called, we are saved by what? By grace, through faith. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, not of ourselves, lest any man should boast, Right? For we are saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, gift of Adonai, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 9. So that grace, that God's grace is the gift of free gift of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit that dwells in your head, in your mind. So remember, if God has given you a gift of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit ain't going to leave you, he ain't going to depart from you. If you know you you are walking in loyalty, you know you are walking the narrow path. You know you have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit didn't depart out of you. The the, the fact that you're not being helped and assisted when you are being rammed with witchcraft for let's say like right now me ten hours and I'm recording this still as the demons are outside as the Jezebel, Queen of Heaven, Lilith, 
and plenty of other male demons, their associates are waiting to do this. They think they're going to continue attacks and they just God is going to roll over for them and going to continue letting them do this. And that there will be no repercussion for Satan. That there will be no repercussion for the one who's under our feet. And therefore, the entire kingdom of Satan is under the feet of Jesus. God loses angels of all rankings and divisions to crush the skulls of the wicked. Because this is my brothers and sisters, those who are sneaking into your house, even away before you don't see them. They cannot enter your house because you are in the covenant of the blood of Jesus. They cannot just come and enter your doors, your, through your windows, because you had windows or doors open. That's not their kingdom to enter to. They are, they are under your authority, my sister, my brother. And you must exercise that authority through the name of Jesus. You must believe that they must obey you. Yes, some fallen angels, the higher ranks, they want to make a point. We're not going to obey you. And they're going to come in and sit on you or whatever in the middle of your house and they're going to be like we're not out of here because of this and this and this because they're they're hoping that they're so important that god most high will respond with some sort of sort of sure terror and that's how they're hoping also to fight use god's children that's another demonic doctrine that's and jezebel god calls them all any demonic teaching in god's teachings when they're mixed with the truth from the bible by the way, any, anything false is called Jezebel doctrine or demonic doctrine. For it is written. That's in Revelation chapter 2, I believe. So remember, my brother, my sister, what's going on? Don't fall for any of the Jezebel or demonic doctrine. Their witchcraft doesn't work on us. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. Their witchcraft doesn't work against our houses. Their witchcraft doesn't work against our territories. The witchcraft doesn't work against your minds, body, soul, spirits. It doesn't work against our body parts. All they can do is they can disobey to God the Father. And by the way, I've been out most obedient and loyal. And they still, they're still, and they cannot come and make up sins and be here or oppress me on false charges of sins that don't exist. And of course, none of them exist. Why? Because there you go. We're under covenant of faith. We are saved by grace through what? Through faith. We walk in faith in our covenant. We are in the law of faith. God calls it law of faith, period. You're a new creation. I'm a new creation. We cannot sin. God said that as a decree over the earth, just like God said that I gave you the power to tread on scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. So nothing shall by any means hurt you. Rejoice not. Continuing on. Look, this is, by the way, I'm quoting Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 20. I give you the power to tread on scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy, so nothing shall by any means hurt you. Rejoice not that all spirits, listen to this, all spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. End of quote. You have full power and authority over all devils, demons, of this earth. I don't care if they come as demon aliens. I don't care if they come as witches. I don't care if it comes as Nazi humans. Whatever they are, there still are demons. Demons. Unclean spirits. All are subject. All spirits of this earth are subject unto you through the name of Jesus. And you can only do as Jesus Christ did. So brothers and sisters, when you read the gospel, good news and when you go over line for line go look up my teaching on my primary channel called oil is the name of yeshua oil is the name of yeshua look up on an older teaching from this year 2022 how i went over line for line how jesus binds and casts out devils and when he refers to them a devil or a demon it doesn't matter you don't have to know who they are you don't have to understand what they are to bind them and cast them out don't seek them out. Don't learn of them. Who cares? Devil always lies and at all times. It will never tell you the truth. Do you understand me? You're not to ever speak to them or interact with them. They will delay obedience. They will delay leaving. We do not speak to demons or devils. 
that are oppressing you. You are to rebuke them sharply and you to let them know that you hate them in the name of Jesus. You to at all times make sure that you you can say and if you for whatever reason you sp ever spoke to them in the past and now you've been trying to come out of it, it might be it might be a while before they'll leave, but they'll leave. Why? Because that's how the earth works. That's how God this earth operates on God's rules, on God's official decree. That means they cannot squeeze your head because they want to. They cannot oppress your breathing because you're not a rock where it doesn't hurt. You can die from it. You can have a heart attack. You can have all kinds of things from it. Either God sees that you are oppressed or he doesn't. And of course, our father sees that you are oppressed. Our father sees that you are human. He made you human, not a demon. He knows that you cannot take that against your body. You're not to ever manifest fear. Stand your ground having no fear. Trust in the name of Jesus that demons must go. And, and God will distribute angels when they least expect it to whoop their ass. What's worse, we're at the point now because we're in an open seal. They will be thrusted to hell as the book of Isaiah says and tells us. Not only that God has the secret weapons in the end of days prepared for them. Where they're going to be manifesting either instantaneously vanishing. I'm sorry, this is in Jeremiah chapter 7 or 8. Where they, they will be instantaneous vanishings of unclean spirits of the face of the earth why for just very that so trust and believe whatever whatever you can think of you can read right now when they oppress you when they harass you when they pierce you beat you cook you heat you up they can do this to your body they can do this also to your household to your just bedroom to just your 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 uh, torso your house they can they might go for your genitals all of this remember is so that you will st turn against God so that you will turn against the name of Jesus accuse him of not defending you accuse him of not finishing something accusing of anything and everything because you know a, a pitiful bride a sorrowful bride or someone who doesn't understand how this works and of course it's not expected of you to understand this you just have to trust Jesus you just have to trust that Jesus is coming and you just have to stay Basically, you think of it as trading the waters. When someone drowns, you got to trade the waters. You're not drowning. You will never drown. But I don't know how else to put this in a better situation in other, in other ways. You can be in the eye of the storm. It's not going to touch you because all these demons are spinning all around you. And you, my beloved sister, my beloved bride, you are victorious. You've been granted already a victory. It is impossible for unto you to my brother, my sister, to lose. Do you understand? It is impossible for you to lose. And remember, of all these demonic doctrines, one of them is also right now for the high ranks is to be convinced that you, in fact, never had the Holy Spirit. That you, in fact, they want to not only, they, they're no longer satisfied that you would deny the name of Jesus. They're no longer satisfied with me to deny the name of Jesus. They're going now. They went full force as of two and a half weeks ago against the Holy Spirit who've done them nothing never said nothing even against them that's how stupid the serpent is you see i don't care who those are all i gotta say it's some sort of dumb entity who's so foolish and so vengeful that it has completely it has completely covered uh, their logical thinking away and by the way that you can read of that in isaiah 28 where you see that the false prophet even false prophet, not because Anna said so, because God said so long ago that when they're going to pass a certain point, my brother, my sister, they're not going to be able to tell the difference. They're not going to be able to tell the difference. It says they're going to negotiate vomit. They're going to drink vomit. They're going to talk vomit. They're going to negotiate over vomit. And they're going to still congratulate one another on the vomit. The false prophet, false prophet, the dragon, the false prophet, and the antichrist, I should say the beast, the dragon, the antichrist, and the ten kings of this earth are the only ones who in the end of days are, sort of speak, guaranteed any kind of rulership on earth. That's it. Nothing and no one else. So, for it is written, that's what it says in the book of Revelation, chapter 17. Nothing and no one else is described that they are still on earth in a ruling position. Nothing. So all these people who are foolishly thinking they're going to be some kings, queens of this, princes of that, you know, masters of this and the other, you know, I don't know where they got this from, but none of that is in the Bible. The Bible, Jesus 
what he says that stays and this is how it's going to be brothers and sisters remember that the Holy Spirit cannot deny itself. Do not ever be afraid that you have spoken against the Holy Spirit. N remember that in case if you, God forbid ever, accidentally something slips against the name of Jesus, against the name of our Heavenly Holy Father, you know, where you're gonna maybe, you maybe you're gonna be in, maybe some of these tortures can last day and night for three weeks, or or you might get two, two hours of sleep, four hours of sleep, six, seven, sometimes you will sleep all night, but the moment you wake up, tortures go back. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, you have to, as I said, remember that this is just a test. At all times, this is just a test. You're being tested for your patience, for your love, for your patient endurance. You're being tested for your forgiveness, for your mercy. You're being tested for your grace. You're being tested. Tested. How are you going to treat our Lord and Savior? Can He trust you? Or are you going to flip on Him the moment He's not going to pull you out of each situation? Can he trust you that you're going to trust him, that he's doing something behind the scenes? And I know it's hard. I know it's hard when you are being pounded against your head for three weeks in a row. I know it's hard because I've went through this not once but thousands of times. I know this. And I'm telling you, Bride of Christ, you can do this. That means also that most likely you are in training for a very high rank within the kingdom. Do not tell anyone of your rank. Do not share this with anyone. Because you're making yourself... They see the light that you emanate. They see wherever you go, how devils flees. So the devil, whenever you hire another attack uh, system of attack, is they going to come your way? They're going to pretend that they're going to come your way. But remember... Most immediately, you're going to see the small group, two or three, that are going to pretend there's 20 of that. And meanwhile, everybody else is escaping you. When you, wherever you walk, they're going to run away from you. Because the truth is, the Holy Spirit in us can turn on them at any point in time and judge them and make them vanish off the face of the earth. And that's the truth. And them pretending that there's no Holy Spirit in me is simply the biggest foolishness that I have heard probably in 2,000 years. But because I've never heard that one before, that's a new one. Um, by the way, just for the record, profaning, profaning the Holy Spirit is not forgivable. Do not give what is holy to the dogs and do not throw your pearls before swine or they will trample them underfoot and turn and maul you. So profaning the holy. This is profaning, I'm sorry, not the Holy Spirit. This is profaning the holy, like holy. Anything that God gave you that is considered holy, high-level information. This is, um, for example, you know when you rebuke a foolish person, right? And you know you're rebuking a foolish person. And you know it's you wrote to sister, 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 so-and-so, you know. It's like I wrote to sister Dana recently, and I said uh, to um, another sister, uh, I wrote him a year ago. And recently because I see nothing has changed and then I see someone who recently I had high hopes for it turns out that they follow them and I'm not saying that these people um, are bad people they're not they are brothers and sisters they still have the Holy Spirit seal but they've been speaking they do not test the spirit and the devil has been slipping not just one in and out it's here and there but with all the dreams with all the visions they've been communicating with unclean spirits and because they've been doing this for so long now, they don't know, they don't know the difference. And they still receive other messages. If they're like them, they'll take those messages and they'll say, oh, this is from God. And for example, when I listen to them, it will be, I know right away it's from Satan or from his demons. For example, when almost the message sounds it's not that it sounds holy, brothers. It's almost be, it will be something relating scriptures, right? Because again, you have to know who the Holy Spirit is to understand the whole message. Holy Spirit talks about Jesus Christ of Nazareth and only glorifies Jesus Christ of Nazareth, right? And Holy Spirit, what? It's holy. Holy Spirit is gentle, meek, and humble. There's no condemnation in the Holy Spirit. There's no condemnation in the name of Jesus. Nothing that Jesus Christ will say, did not, he will never be condemning you. Okay, he will be honest, he may be raw, he may be giving honest warnings at times. Still, you must test the spirits of each message, each vision, each dream, right? So with this being said, if Holy Spirit only by Jesus Christ's own words, because that's his spirit, spirit of God, is the Holy Spirit, 
inside of you, inside of your heart, inside of your mind, that only talks about Jesus Christ and that only discusses and glorifies Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Obviously, number one, it will never talk about demons. Number two, it will never talk about demonic ranks. It will never teach you on them either. Yes, it will give you, it will show you warnings of things to come, but in a very gentle, sensitive manner to your spirit. Your spirit to God is now under the precious blood of Jesus covering your heart, your mind, body, soul, spirit, your body, God's flesh, excuse me, your human flesh becomes now as if God's it is God's temple. So it's, do you understand? It's a, it's a property sealed and marked with a permanent seal through the day of redemption by the seal of the Holy Spirit, which is like your engagement ring. Holy Spirit is like your engagement ring for it is written, which is first installment from our Heavenly Holy Father through His Son Jesus Christ of Nazareth of things that you are about to inherit already here on earth now and in the days to come in the new earth, whether in heaven or on the new earth, depending on who you are and when you're going to come to the knowledge of the good news, to the gospel, to the to when you're going to confess Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your Lord and your Savior, right? Because all you have to do is confess Him in accordance that says in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 10. And who justifies all things on earth? God Almighty. Jesus Christ the Son is the only one and only who's returning as the judge of this earth, right? And that's, of course, who justifies all things? It, for it is written in Romans 8.33. Please go look up those verses. I'm going to quote to you verse 8.33 of Romans. Who are you to say I'm not Adonai is God's chosen? It is, it is for, I, for God, ha, for I have chosen thee. It is God who justifies all things. For it is written. Romans 10.10 10 says prof, that you must profess Jesus Christ of Nazareth as your Lord, as your Savior. Th that you believe on him as the only begotten Son of God. God of Israel, Aleph, Alpha and Omega also, and that he died on a cross for your sins and the sins of the world, and that he, that God Almighty has risen him from the dead on the third day. And that's it. That's it. That's Romans 10.10 10 for you. So profess Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth as, as it is written in Romans 10.10. 10. Confess that statement. And remember, Holy Spirit will never leave, God will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13 verse 8. He will never leave you nor forsake you for the joy of the, for the strength of the, for the joy of the Lord. Yeshua HaMashiach is your strength. Nehemiah 8 verse 10. Do you understand my brother, my sister? This is the time to walk on water. This is the time where God is calling out all the Jezebel doctrines. This is the time where God is training his, his servants, his warriors, you, my brothers and sisters. If Jesus healed the demoniac, Jesus healed the Gadarene demoniacs, right? And he commanded those demons were trying to talk to Jesus Christ. Did Jesus talk to them? This is, you'll find this in Matthew chapter 8, at the end of chapter 8. No, he didn't. He ignored them. He asked them, what is demon? What's your name? This is the, the, the one or two times in the entire scriptures. He calls them, he calls an entity, an unclean spirit, a demon. And he says, speak demon, what is thy name? Right? L let me read the whole story to you. I, I'm going with this summer. So here we are. When he came to the other side, to the country of the Gadarenes, two demonians coming out of the tomb met him. They were so fierce that no one could pass that way. Suddenly they shouted, What have you do with us, son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Did you notice? The demons knew that son of God is coming to torment them. To judge them, to sentence that they already are sentenced. So even 2,000 years ago when Jesus walked the earth, before this, Jesus died on the cross, when he was fully God, fully human, all demons on earth disproved, all of them knew who he was. All of them knew that they've been already judged. All of them know how the rules of engagement, what they can or cannot do. They cannot touch you if God will not allow it. So if still... You're going through difficulties and you're being attacked. My brother, my sister, I repeat, memorize Luke 10, 17 to 20. And remember, just as here, I'm going to continue on reading. Verse 30, 830. 
Now a large herd of swine was feeding at some distance from them, and the demons begged them, If you cast us out, send us into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go! So they came out and entered the swine, and suddenly the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and perished in the water. And the swine herds ran off, and on going into the town, they told the whole story about what had happened to the demoniacs. And then the whole town came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their neighborhood. They were afraid. And after getting to a boat, he crossed the sea and came to his own town. Then the next one is in uh, Matthew chapter 9, and Jesus heals a para, paralytic. Brothers and sisters, Jesus was in, in all its cases, my brothers and sisters. Yeshua, Jesus, didn't say to the person, hey, can you fast two, three days, or a day, or whatever, and uh, pray or fast, uh, I'll, I'll come and get you in three days. That's not what happened here, and those were, it says here, fierce demons, right? There were fierce demons, fierce demons that no one could pass. What I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 17 that some, some of them will come out, and I'm going to read to you in a second, some type of devils. Here it is. Some of them will only come out. Here. Here. Oh, there you go. I want to show you how my Bible didn't have that verse. 17, chapter 17, verse 20. How some demons, Jesus says, will come out by prayer and fasting. And look what it says here. This is at the bottom. This Look, this is my page. It's not here. Look, for years, I didn't know this even existed. For years, and this doesn't exist in the other Bible I have. It doesn't exist. Let me read the verse for you. So I wrote here, important, read full verses 20 to 21 because it tells you how to get demons out. And I wrote here, by prayer and fasting, because I had this Bible since I was in college. Why do you think in certain well-renowned Ivy League schools and other well-known international schools, universities, they give out Bibles? Because under the pretext of analysis of a Bible, they distribute these Bibles and then you're going to end up keeping them. And they don't have these certain versions, new modern versions are missing entire verses or most important parts of the verses. Like when it comes to spiritual warfare, that some of them, some of those devils, you might have to starve them out. So it's so, so you have to start prayer and praying to the Father and, and begging Him, Father, please uproot them in the name of Jesus. Father, please deliver me from evil in the name of Jesus. Because they must come out by prayer and fasting, period. So this is, for example, I'm telling you, I've suffered because of this a lot. And I know people who have suffered greatly because of this. Because we didn't know that this verse, and no one corrected me. No one corrected us. We didn't know. Thank goodness, Holy Spirit led us anyway to do that. That we proactively missed meals. You know, I told you I missed five, six times out of the seven days I miss. I fast intermittently anyway, as a lot of you do too. You simply don't have time, you don't eat breakfast or you don't eat dinner, but maybe you eat lunches and breakfast, you know, whatever your, your deal is. Again, brothers and sisters, thousands, tens of thousands of people suffered because of this. You must make this verse known. You must make this verse known to the humanity that this is, if something isn't coming out, it's because of that verse. So now let me start the whole verse and then I'm going to be done. I'm done talking. This is chapter 17, verse 20. He, meaning Jesus, and he said unto them, because of your little faith, for truly I tell you, if you have a faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing shall be impossible for you. And that's it. As you can see, that's it. That's it. Done. But then it says, look, right? Verse 20. There's no verse 21. So they do these titles, which is deceptive, because I thought this is 21 verse. I'm like, well, nothing says here. Nothing says here. So then the next one it says, the next number over is verse 22. And it also has the letter, another letter just says here. I'm, look at my finger, it has letters, right? Okay. So finally, I swear, this was like another three years later, if not more. 
I realize it says here, listen to this. Other ancient authorities add the verse. Like they're like making it sound like it's, oh, it's unnecessary. They add on a verse. These ancient authorities are so foolish. You know, you don't need that verse. Because God, of course, curses all who removed anything from the Bible. God already put that curse. That curse never was broken or changed with the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Why? Because God warns, do not end on to the words that I sp spoken through my mouth. Do not end on, meaning don't change his teachings. Don't embellish his teachings. Don't, don't make them sound like something else than what he was teaching. Using different words is okay when you're teaching all of that, as long as it means the same thing. Quoting precisely how it is written in the Bible is perfect but i'm saying you can discuss god's situation you're not adding on to the words if you would say if i would say knowing that this verse is here this verse 21 that i'm about to read to you is here at the bottom but i would only tell you of this that's deceptive that's demonic that's someone's curse for that someone is heavily cursed for that i don't care that it's down here People are under the demonic possessions, under oppressions. They don't. They, they might not even see that little G letter right here that they have to supposed to look something down here. You understand, brothers and sisters? Because when they will look, and whenever they look through these letters, it just says here that it may be mean it or him. It there's never a sentence there, but a, a letter or two or one word. So how you know what could it be? So, but anyway, in this case, look at this. Once in a blue moon, it says here. Other ancient authorities add a verse, and then it says, look, verse 21, you see number two one, and it says, but this kind does not come out except by prayer and fasting. You see this? Do you understand? So, brothers and sisters, if you don't have King James Version of the Bible, because in a King James Bur B B Biblical Version, it is there. This is the Bible that I had for years. And I still use this the most time, but now I got smarter and, you know, I have, I bought King James Bible version about a year, year and a half ago. And then that's when I realized that verse. And then I have some other, also a new interna international version just for easier reading. But I will, it's best to also have apps in your cell phone, but apps in case there is no electricity, in case, you know, you don't have access to the internet you cannot read them you cannot uh, you know they're useless unto you so i'm also here my brothers and sisters just as a quick warning if you can purchase it's like a radio it's 30 or 40 dollars if you can purchase a radio that only plays scriptures my brothers and sisters purchase that purchase that or have some sort of um you know something where you can download onto the memory of your computer uh, or like an uh, an iPad that you can designate you can sometimes buy these cheap iPads for fifty sixty dollars or maybe you have an older device where you're gonna download an entire e sword it takes like six gigs I think that e sword I don't know I think about that but you have all the information on it I have an entire old Samsung like eight nine year old at least eight year old you know um, tablet that I have an entire e sword on it. However, for whatever reason, I've never been able to use it. But I know it's possible to do this, brothers and sisters. You can download in those, in, as opposed to iPads, in tablets, you can buy a memory card or you can buy a memory stick. For as long as you're going to have electricity, for as long as you're going to, you can do this. You can buy a memory stick, 128 gigs, and you can put this in your iPhones, in your cell phones, and just download it. Make, make sure that you can build, purchase this from reputable stores, stores, brothers and sisters, so you can use them. But best is, brothers and sisters, something where you can download it, and as long as you have electricity, you can pull it up. As I said, best year, Heavenly Holy Father recommended this to me two, two and a half years ago, and I forgot about it until recently, like last week, when I also uh, have been repurchasing different Bibles, the pocket Bibles, purchase a pocket Bible with psalms and with proverbs so that's another thing you must do purchase a pocket bible that you can, will carry with you everywhere make sure you love what it looks like and if not if you right now you don't have finances go to a dollar store just get a bible it will be difficult to read but if you love jesus you're gonna make it work listen i still have those little pocket bibles because i love my god 
and we've got all things are possible and I purchased them they're a dollar this is what they look like they're a dollar you can buy them in white or you can buy them in black KGV New Testament purchase it it's KGV version there might be difficult to read because their letters are so small but I carry one in my pocketbook and I just got rid of one because the other Bible someone gave me that I realized worse this person is um is it's not a nice person and that I didn't want anything except any gifts from him and I should have gotten rid of even there was the Bible I, Bible can I don't think can ever be cursed you see here's a white one I for now I'm carrying this but I'm gonna replace this hopefully this week with because this does not have summary and proverbs and when you're lamenting or when you're praying my brothers and sisters the best thing is Holy Spirit loves to use, for example, um, psalmery for lamenting, for supplication, for protection, for praise and worship. Jesus loves that. God loves that. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, please obey these recommendations. And best yet, if you can, simply purchase these um, these radios. I don't know what they are. Radios where you can purchase basically an entire as long as you're gonna have batteries you can play the scriptures do you understand they're gonna illegalize the Bible they're gonna illegalize the scriptures and and I need you to memorize as many verses as you can you warriors God treats God Jesus fought spiritual warfare um, not really he gave us all the power and authority and told us that we will have to this is why we have to put on the full armor of god he, jesus told us in ephesians that's in ephesians chapter 6 he also told us what for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers right but remember through other people through other people but sometimes just sometimes like in my situation do you understand you cannot speak to demons it's forbidden to speak to demons. It's forbidden to interact with demons. You must never speak to them because, because they will never want to leave. Okay? So, remember of that. You must, you must love your enemies. You must pray for them. Fast, brothers and sisters. And whenever you fast, do not look, do not look, you know, like the hypocrites look. Do not look, uh, you know, like you have disfigured faces. Okay? Just, just, just when you first put on some, make yourself look fresh, like put some oil on your face so you look, so you don't look tired. What Jesus means here, look refreshed, look refreshed. So put some olive oil on your face, meaning use your cream, wash your face, put some olive oil on your face. I actually use olive oil one way, this past winter for about a month nonstop or however long it was and it works. Olive oil, if you, you know, when demons are attack your skin, it's difficult. Olive oil is amazing, especially when you anoint olive oil. So another recommendation for me is my brothers and sisters is that you will use this. Do you see? Use this. Purchase olive oil. It's a little bit dusty because this is the next bottle. I purchased this one because it has sort of my name in it. My name is Anna or Anya. So when you remove H, which in Hebrew is Hana, Chana, which is spelled with an H or CH. And so you would call me Hanya, and it's, it's called, if you remove K and R, you will, will say Etta, which means is gold. So Anya is gold, Anna is gold, God's grace, God's mercy is gold. Isn't that cool? And here, this is how much I've used this for brothers and sisters. I'm not joking. For my face, for anointing me, for doing this, I've used this whole thing by refilling this by using this on my face on my legs on my body i've used this on my body i anoint this and i know my whole body in fact i'm gonna do it tonight praise be to jesus so brothers and sisters anoint your bodies the, i bought this at, at um, ross for 5.99 because my finances are very very limited i don't care if the enemy knows the enemy knows i'm not a liar I don't have a normal regular job even though I call this a job I'm simply helping out a neighbor and that's what I do it's not you know yes I'm there all day because we're neighbors and I, I have nothing else to do I work for the kingdom of heaven full-time and that's what I do and I'm waiting for now God's further orders as to what am I going with this because I'm being heavily attacked here and I don't really brothers and sisters I need we need to be around minded like people People who pray like you, people who praise and worship like you, people who love Jesus, people who 
you know want to lift you up spiritually not drag you down because even though i'm lifting you up spiritually and i'm sharing with you all these different tricks that the devil is about to use against you if maybe he is already because eventually you will fall victim to these attacks whether you like it or not why because jesus told us that if you are his true disciples his true children of god right what did jesus said what did yeshua said brothers and sisters You must always have hope, and because hope will never put us to shame, okay? Hope, do you understand? God's hope. Listen to me. The only one who's trying to shame you and put you to shame right now is Satan and his demons. God's hope, God's messages will never put you to shame. And because God's hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given onto us. Each one of us has a gift of the Holy Spirit. Romans 5.5, 5, as it is written in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 14, that verse that I told you, that Holy Spirit, He is given unto us like an engagement ring, is given to a bride as the first installment of what's coming. He, meaning Holy Spirit, is our promised hope of a future inheritance for all who have been made alive in Jesus Christ. This whole promise seals us until we have all the redemption's promises and experience complete freedom all for the supreme glory and honor of God. No matter what they do to me, I have complete freedom in the name of Jesus. It's a given. I mean, I've had it for a long time now. For three years and about, I don't know, let's say three and a half years. You know that I told you in secret that, you know, I've been um, awakened about three years and eight months ago. And this is, rather, brothers and sisters, keep at all times that God is your refuge. He is your shield. That the word of Adonai, the word of God, Aleph and Tav, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the, the only begotten son of Adonai, he is your source of that hope, okay? I can be your source of your hope, but God is the fountain of living waters, okay? So God, listen to what I'm saying. God will not ignore the needy forever. The hopes of the poor will not always be crushed. Okay? No one who trusts in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth will ever, listen to me, will ever be disgraced. Ever. That's his promise. But disgrace comes to the one who deceive others. By the way, that's sort of something like written in Psalm 25, verse 3. Because God... Jesus Christ, His Son, our Messiah, King Jesus, for the Jews and Gentiles, for the rich and the poor, for, for those who are about to pass on to from being wicked, evil people. This is why I'm being attacked, because I said, God told me that quite a few people are about to understand what the, what the, what the enemy has been through, the occult, and there will, some have, you know, that they might, that they will be crossing over through repentance. So again, uh, the enemy cannot take the truth and they're coming after the messenger because they cannot handle the truth. What do I have to do with that? Am I going after them? Am I judging them? Am I, uh, excuse me, coming after them? If they're on my channel, I know they are. God this revealed to that to me before they even come. They, he always tells me that they went out, scout, they're scouting out a new one, that they're coming and scouting out another one. They're oppressing me. They're oppressing me for every time I release a warning, every time I release God's word, I'm being oppressed. Every time I'm being commanded to release to you what the new Jezebel agenda is or new tactic or old one, just maybe you haven't experienced it and God maybe knows you are going to come here and listen to this. So I'm recording this right now just for you. Because if you, are, if you have not been patient enough or desperate enough to listen to my videos that are more than 20 minutes long, and even 20 minutes is, is too much for you, then obviously your life has not been desperate enough. We are the salt and light of the earth. Jesus says you are the salt and light of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be ever restored? It's no longer good for anything, but it's thrown out and trampled under food. You are the light of the world. The city built on a hill cannot be hid. You, my beloved brother, my sister, you are the city built on the hill. God doesn't want to hide you. Just like you are a lamp that's lit up, cannot be covered. The same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to our Heavenly Holy Father in heaven. Because just as in verse 15 says here, no one after lighting up a lamp puts that lamp under the bushel in 
under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. Right? Right? You're a light of the world. It doesn't matter what your family members, when you try to awaken them, they weren't awakening. They don't want trusting you. They don't believe you. That's God's will. I repeat, Jesus, God most high is the Alpha and Omega. You can lead the cow to the water or the horse to the water, whatever you want to say. It doesn't mean that they will drink. They have a human free will. If God didn't, will not force them to drink and God will not force them, they must keep their free will. That's it. That's not your problem. You're not the God. You, righteous child of God, it's not your fault that they're not awakened. It's not your fault that they didn't come to drink that true living waters, fountains of true living water. That's not your fault. Don't ever hold yourself accountable for other people's sins or for other people's failures or maybe, you know, disbelief. Disbelief is a big one. Bitterness, another one. As long as you overcame your own bitterness, that's the most important thing. As long as, long as you are in the process of being an overcomer of your own flesh, that's what you must fight. That's all. If you're missing things and just how it happens, for 18 years you weren't purchasing things, you have to repurchase a lot of these things and God makes it possible, but you still make Jesus Christ number one, you still spend time with him as number one. Like it was in my situation, I was being attacked because how dare I want a regular pair of shoes? How dare I not want to wear my old pair of boots and shoes that I bought for $4, $6 at thrift store? How dare I want a new pair of shoes? Do you understand? In other words, I was being attacked for anything and everything. And what I'm trying to tell you is, devil attacks you for no reason. There doesn't have to be reason. A lot of people in, in their kingdom think that you're being attacked or that you did something wrong and that God allow, is allowing this. Not so. It has nothing to do with, the, with anything. They will attack because they're wicked and twisted. They do not work for our Father. But when commanded and God wants to stop them, they will be stopped in an instance. Those fallen angels know how it works on earth. They cannot transgress the boundaries. And you, to stand your ground until God comes in and rescues you. In the meantime, sort of speak, trade, trade, trade those waters. Stand with your head high up, praising the Lord, worshiping the Lord through your pain, through your piercings, through your headaches, through your migraines. No matter how debilitating there will be, if you got to go to the hospital, go to the hospital. Get help. Do not be foolish like me, waiting in a house when they're pounding against your head. You, you being, you know... <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm waiting because I'm like, well, I know it's a demon, so I know God will save me. And then I've waited uh, one time and nobody took me to the hospital when I was knocked out and something happened for two and a half days. You know, I went to sleep on Friday. It was on Monday, something like that. It was like two days. Turns out I had a very severe concussion and no one had enough logic that was around me, my roommates, to take me to the hospital. Can you believe that? But that's how people are. And those are people, well, we thought you just, you were just exhausted, tired. You know I don't do drugs. You know I don't take any sleeping pills. What did, what did you think happened to me? Well, you 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 tripped, you fell, and you went to sleep. We just you know, you you felt very confused afterwards. Well, you know I don't drink. You know I you know like so. What did you do? You don't get like that from two sips of anything. Plus I don't drink. That day was somebody's uh, name day. Uh, name day in this family and whatever. Friends came over of those people, and uh, I had uh, literally two, three sips of champagne. I didn't sleep because I was drunk or because I was crap face. Do you understand? And I believe there was foul play involved, but never mind all that. If that could have been prevented in a hospital, I wouldn't have the injury that I have to my head and to my brain. So this is just just shows, you know, I cannot be mad at them. I can only be, I, I, I'm not going to be mad at myself either. It happened. I'm alive, I'm well, it is what it is. I have a huge, pretty big bald spot in the back because it caused traumatic alopecia because my head was cut. I woke up with blood all over my pillows and these people apparently thought nothing of it. Like, hey, you know, it's a, like a two inch wide open wound, but you know, it's so normal to have that. Like, it's not a big deal at all. No, you know, I'm laughing at this right now, but this was a very severe injury. 
And when I showed the hospital doctor, eventually I went to the to the uh, to the cert to emergency, and I said, "Can you please take a look at this? Because I don't know what this is. I feel this thing in the back of me. Can you tell me what it is? Because I felt a bump, and I just I was like, you know, I fell, but." I felt weird. I felt very like confused since then and like I get tired since then. All kinds of things are affecting me. But I'm saying is brothers and sisters, tell me how adults can mismanage just visually looking at something like that and say, oh, she's fine because I'm always fine. You know, no matter what's going on with me. See, my fault is that I always minimize pain. When I'm getting pounded, I'm going to be smiling at you. I'm going to say, no, I'm cool. Just you know just give me a little bit of space and I'll be alright just you know meanwhile you someone like maybe you you're gonna be in emergency room after five minutes of that kind of pain and uh, this is me after you know 14 years of that uh, maybe uh, maybe father you should stop this we all have different thresholds of pain we all have different families we all grew up differently and in there's some cultures on in Europe especially European cultures families not only your certain bloodlines where pain is very minimized pain is looked down upon or we don't want to cause chaos we don't want to incur bills i don't want to incur bills i don't want to incur bills how would i incur bills a trip to the hospital it's going to be 20 30 40 thousand dollars who's going to pay my bill the one who pushed me off the steps like i was pushed at four and a half years old and i know it was a demon you know what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? But you see, with God, all things are possible. God will tell you who did this to you. If you, let's say, someone is hurting you or beating you and you don't know, and then they're trying to convince you, you started everything. Because some of them are literally invisible, right? And they've been harassing you, beating you. But guess what? The synagogue of Satan has an address. All of them have an address in a place someone is coming here through astral projection somehow so even if it's a devil or a demon god sees and they he knows exactly where they live he knows exactly where they are in a second heaven or whatever they're hiding they cannot come and harass you beat your head you are a human being you're not a rock you're not a tree you are a live human being. You have a nervous system. You have a skin. And you need to breathe properly to sleep. You cannot be overheating day after day after day because your brain won't work either properly. Because you cannot live like that. God wouldn't hurt a bird, an animal. God, you are worth more than many sparrows. My brother, my sister, right? Jesus teaches us that. Of course, he's going to come and defend you. But I'm saying, but I'm saying, by the way, for it is written, let go of whatever uh, animosity you keep against anything and anyone in the family. Forgive them, move on. It's not a big deal, okay? You're going to go on and move on on doing greater, bigger things for the kingdom of heaven. And unfortunately, when they're ready, they, they will be awakened. And God will, he promised all of us, right? He's going to awaken our family members. So remember, take care of yourself. You cannot serve two masters. Remember that the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. And if that light in you is darkness, how great is that darkness that it can fake that light, right? By the way, other than that last half sentence that I added on, this was actual verses from Matthew chapter 6, verse 22 to 23. So brothers and sisters, remember... Pray how Jesus commanded us to pray. Bind and cast out devils as Jesus Christ of Nazareth binded and cast out devils. And remember, this is all for the supreme glory and honor of our heavenly Holy Father. Remember that God will humble the proud and bring down the arrogant city, that he will bring it down to the dust. Because everyone who is proud and feels that they are superior to others will one day be, will be humiliated before all. And everyone who humbles themselves will one day will be lifted up and honored before all look 1814 so please be willing to be made yourself low before the lord jesus christ of nazareth and he will exalt you he will exalt you james 4 10 because adonai god of israel cannot break his word and because his word cannot change the promise is likewise unchangeable we who have run for our very own lives to our heavenly holy father to god to adonai God, the Creator, we have every reason to grab the promise, hope, with both hands. 
and never let go. It is an unbreakable spiritual life when reaching past all appearances right to the very presence of God. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18 to 19. Have humility for the sake of your ministry, for the sake of your mind, body, soul, spirit, for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, even whether you have ministry or not. Toil tirelessly. Yes, you're going to be, while you toil tirelessly, you're going to be criticized continually simply because your hope is in the living Adonai, is in the living God, God in the flesh, who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He's a wonderful life giver for all, of all, I repeat, all children of all of the men and even more so to those who believe first timothy 4 10 do you believe in the name of jesus christ of nazareth that it will carry you out of this mess that will carry you through this darkness the devil doesn't want to give up on you the devil doesn't want to give you up they must you resist the devil it must flee from you it must before they permanently leave you alone forever and ever and or till next attack right by the way if you've been angry no one is supposed to like tortures or pain that's normal but remember 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 my brother my sister remember my brothers and sisters that you must know who you are in Jesus Christ of Nazareth that the excuse me Romans 8 33 says who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen it is God who justifies Romans 8 33 I correct Romans 8 33 Romans 8, 3, who will bring any charge against those who God has chosen? It is God who justifies. For I, the Lord, Lord of justice, I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Isaiah 61, verse 8. Because we know that Adonai, God of Israel, in his justice will punish anyone who does such things. Romans 2, 2. What things? Things that they're doing against you. Things that they've done against me and are doing against me. For thou shalt not suffer which to live, says Exodus 22, 18. God's decision on witches did not change. His opinion on necromancers didn't change. His opinion on time, uh, observers of times didn't change. Those who send demons against you, those prophet liars. The oppressor, your oppressor will come to an end in the name of Jesus and destruction will cease. The aggressor will vanish from the land and in a love, in love, throne will be established in faithfulness. A man will sit on it. The one from the house of David, in one whom in judging seeks justice and speeds, speeds up the cause of righteousness. For it is written, Isaiah 16, verse 4 to 5. So trust me, my brother and my sister, when I tell you justice will rule in the wilderness and righteousness in a fertile field. As it is written, Isaiah 32, 16. Why? Because I know that the Lord is still here in the city and he does no wrong. Day by day he hands down justice. He does not, does not fail. But the wicked, you know, they know no shame. As it is written, Zephaniah, chapter 3, 5. Because the wicked are wicked. But if they're coming to an answer, cursed be the one who perverts the justice due to the stranger and the fatherless and the widow as it was written in Deuteronomy 27 verse 19 why so celebrate all you people celebrate praise the name of Jesus rise up and praise the name of Adonai Jesus the devil hates when you praise the Lord when you're in pain so praise the power of the blood of Jesus say I praise you Jesus I praise the power of my Lord Jesus of Nazareth inside of me and outside of me I praise you Jesus I exalt your name Jesus I exalt Adonai, God of Israel, Aleph and Tav, in the name of Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. Alpha and Omega, we praise you. Now let the fear of the Lord be on you also, my brothers and sisters. Judge carefully, for with the Lord our Adonai, God, there is no injustice or partiality or bribery. Second Chronicles chapter 19, verse 7. And God will not let the wicked live, so don't worry. He will give justice only to the afflicted. As it is in Job chapter 36, verse 6, He does not let the wicked live, but gives justice to the afflicted. You are afflicted, He will give you justice. He will give you justice, His promise. I don't care if it's Old Testament in the book of Job. I don't care what, because does not pervert the justice for the widow, the orphan, and the fatherless. Remember those verses. Because God, Adonai, God of Israel, Jesus Christ, the Son, never, ever, ever takes His eyes off the innocent people. His children are innocent if God declared you innocent because you've repented of all your sins, I repeat in the Romans 833, who is he to say that you're guilty of something? Who is he on earth? Who is he on earth or who is he in our kingdom? Who is any of them accusing you? Who are they in my kingdom? Who are they in my kingdom on earth? Who are they? Are they exalting themselves against the Holy Spirit? 
Are they exalting themselves against the wisdom of God? How about this? God already said, there's the verse. I condemn you, saith the Lord, in the name of Jesus. No weapon form against you, sir, shall ever prosper. So don't worry. Don't worry, my child, righteous child of God. God will set you up on thrones with the kings, with kings, and he will exalt you forever and ever, righteous children of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All of you children of God, Jews and Gentiles alike, you of the 12 nations, excuse me, 12 tribes, tribes of Israel, you, the two witnesses, you, 144,000, you, right now, who you're about to come down in the name of Jesus, you, oh, beautiful, merciful children of God. Concentrate on the power of the blood of Jesus. All those cooking pots, stirring pots, God crushes them with his fist. None of it works on us. If it undeserved curse, wisdom says, will never sprout. It is futile to pile up these judgments for the wicked. It's futile. They're not going to be... Is there no difference between one, ju one crime or 10,000 crimes? How does the, for example, criminal system works in America or, or Germany or Poland or, I don't know, France? How does it work? When you commit one crime, are you judged for one crime or are you judge if you commit 10 crimes, you judge per crime and you receive time or whatever it is, punishment for all 10 of them. If you commit 10 of them, you are punished for all 10 of them. All 10 of them. If you kill one person, do you get the same time for as if you would, uh, someone murders one person versus 10, 10, 10, 10 murders? Of course, they get punished for 10 murders. They get life maybe 10 times over in prison, meaning with no chance of parole, right? Okay, so the same goes in spiritual world. Say it a lot. Same thing. There's a difference when they come and harass you once for a few seconds and you rebuke them and they flee because they must flee at the name of Jesus. All flee in the name of Jesus. For it is written. All bow to the name of Jesus also for it is written. So brothers and sisters, be Listen to the prophets, listen to the warning of the prophets, and behold, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who is sitting on the throne, because he is God who makes things right, and he's giving justice to the defenseless, he's, he will secure justice for all the poor, he will uphold the cause of the needy, and he will make your innocence radiate like the dawn, and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. I promise you, because the Lord Jesus is righteous, He loves justice, and the upright will see His face, as it is in Psalm 11, verse 7, 7, for the orphans and the oppressed will be terrified no longer. For you, Yeshua Jesus, Heavenly Holy Father, in the name of Jesus, you will bring them justice, and no one will trouble them anymore, as it is written in Psalm 10, verse 18. For the Lord is the God of gods and uh, the Lord of lords and, and the, he's great, he's mighty and awesome Adonai who is not partial to, to uh, who is not partial and takes no bribe. He executes justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the sojourner, giving him food and clothing. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17 to 18. So remember brothers and sisters that God Adonai, God of Israel, Jesus Christ the Son, He will never pervert justice. You sh he says, for I quote Deuteronomy 16, verse 10, 19 to 20, I quote, You shall not pervert justice, you shall not show partiality, nor take a bribe, for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the righteous. You shall follow what is altogether just, and that you may live and inherit the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You are, each one of you is being guided right now, praise be to Jesus, to your own land, to your own inheritance. Each one of us is guided to our own inheritance, where it's going to be a place within your new family for you, within a new tribe, within a within your tribe, where it will be gathered within your, within a new family. If you are a child who is young, like 18 years old, 19 years old, you just came out of maybe DHS system, and you are maybe homeless, and you are being kicked out of the house, Maybe you're a college student, but they're kicking you out. You know, don't worry. God will take care of you. God will clothe you. God will com completely take care of you. Stay away from dating. Stay away from drugs. Stay away from all the things of this worldly. Satan will be tempting you, righteous child of God. Okay, especially you ladies. Keep your virginity. Keep your virginity. No masturbation, no sex with demons. Masturbation, sex with demons. You must understand that whoever you are, whatever you are, you, you, you must repent of it, whatever you've done. I know that the rest of you are righteous children of God who are listening to this. And if you are coming here listening, praise be to Jesus, it's because God has led you here to this recording. I bless you, brothers and sisters. And I need you to understand that if God has 
created you and I to be here for such a time as this. You must say to Yeshua, I love you. Justice is coming and justice. Do not say no to anger, say no to bitterness. And it's harder said and than done, but this is why you're being trained. This is why you're being trained under all different circumstances. Love your Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your spirit, with all your mind and with all your heart. Pray the prayer as often as you can. And the, the moment you make a mistake, a so-called sin, pray, please remember, just as you must give to everyone who will beg from you and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you as it is written in Matthew chapter 5, verse, uh, what is it, 40, 42. Remember, brothers and sisters, just as you must pray a prayer of Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 13, when Yeshua tells us, when you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then in this way, our Father, in heaven, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Please give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory from forever and ever. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. Brothers and sisters, in many other biblical versions, he will says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive given our debtors and bring us not and bring us and do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the wicked one or evil one. Again, it depends what and then it downstairs here. It says evil. And here they add on the verse. It says, other ancient authorities add in some form, for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours forever. Amen. Yes, that's an important verse to say. And of course, Satan doesn't want that in this. So all these versions that are coming out, that are being printed, these people are acting. They're printing still Bibles, but little as they know, you cannot put them at the bottom and God will say, oh, well, you know, you still print it. No, he, they didn't. That belongs with, up there. I don't care if it's on the same page. I didn't see this for three years. And guess what? I wasn't led to it. So these people, these people are, in the meantime, maybe are demonically possessed or maybe something that walked into them prior to repentance. They didn't know. They were stupid foolish. And God has allowed it to save them. That has happened too. Some other people are in prison, thrown in prison by Satan. It says in the book of Smyrna, right? In the chapter of, 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 in, of Revelation uh, for the church of Smyrna, right? It's by our Heavenly Holy Father's will. And you are about to be set free. This is the Golden Jubilee year, the so-called 50th Golden Jubilee year. We are in the month of Ab Ath for the, tribe that, for the tribe of Simeon. This is the month when there is also a lot of failure, but also a lot of joyfulness where the love of God is celebrated. So celebrate the love of Adonai. Celebrate the love of Jesus Christ in your lives. In your, and always look at the glass half full, not half empty. No matter how hard it is. They, as I said, they, go, they want you just to curse Jesus. They want you to curse your God. They want you to deny their names. They want you to speak against them. Do not allow that. Say on purpose, Jesus, I praise you. Jesus, I love you. Please, loosening angels of all rankings and divisions to come and, Father, to come and rescue me from this demonic oppression. Come and rescue me from these demonic bastards in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For I bind and cast out all demons in the name of Jesus. Get out now, fallen angels. Depart from this house in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. No one can change the fact that Jesus gave us full power and authority over the scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy, who's the enemy, Satan, and over all, all the spirits of this earth. Again, that's Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 20. Memorize. Memorize also Matthew 16, 19, which is keys to the kingdom of heaven. What you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and what you loosen on earth shall be loosened in heaven. So bind them with the keys to the kingdom of heaven in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Bind them to hell in Jesus Christ's mighty name. All my oppressors, I bind them to hell in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I harvest them by the power of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All of them who are against me, past, present, future, you come and you oppress me, you touch me, you're going to be harvested in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, period. There's no, there, there's no other procedure at this time in broken seals on earth but that. Everybody's harvested, period. 
especially the two witnesses or anyone the Holy Spirit. If God has taught you how to harvest or God has commanded you how to harvest, or maybe Father God is, has sent them out to harvest, seven angels of the seven churches, all of them harvest. People who've been taught how to use keys to the kingdom of heaven, all of them harvest. Holy Spirit inside of each one of this person, that person doesn't have to say anything, can also harvest or mark them for harvest because they don't have to be immediately removed. Sometimes they are. I've seen both. Sometimes they're not. Just imagine that they're gone. That's it. And say, I bind you with the keys to the kingdom of heaven in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Strong man, and I bind and cast out all you devils. Come out of me in my house in the name of Jesus. Never return here again in the name of Jesus. Never, ever, ever. I bind you to desert places of earth in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, please take over and help us. Father, show your people the way, what to do with these demonic entities that can never return to us or our homes or our bodies. Praise the power be to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom we love, whom we trust. Alleluia. Glory be to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let us be terrified no longer. I speak love and life and joy and peace, peace, supernatural peace over whoever is listening to this peace, over our ministry, my ministry, and all my channels. All my ministries, our houses, minds, bodies, souls, spirits, peace, joy, and love of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, forgiveness and mercy and grace and supernatural peace. Glory be to Jesus. We decree and declare of our neighborhood, city, state, country, in the name of Jesus, land, and our children, unborn, newly born, and their minds, bodies, soul, spirits, hearts, alleluia, and our own. Thank you, Shua Jesus, for all your help. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We exalt your name of Jesus. Alleluia. Alleluia. Hosanna to the highest. Amen. I praise you, O Jesus.